Right. We need to go over your movements for last night. I put a few drinks after work. Um, left the bar around nine o'clock. About ten minutes later, that's when I was attacked. Did you leave the bar with your brother? What? The man we mentioned earlier, Oliver Robinson. Is this a joke? What are they talking about, Andy? I haven't seen him for years. You've got a brother? Mrs Brennan, do you think this might be better if we did this alone with Andrew? No, I don't. I want him to tell me what's going on. It means nothing to me, love. Simple as that. My cousin Alan doesn't mean a great deal to me. Doesn't mean I keep him a secret. Your brother's being questioned back at the station, but he says that you wanted to borrow some money off him. I'm not borrowing off him. He owes it to me. How much money does he owe you? A lot. Do you recognise this? It was found on the floor by your body. Oh, God, Andy, what have you done? He gave it to me. He couldn't find the cash, so he gave me the watch instead. You think it's my brother that beat me up, don't you? So, prior to this two-month period where your brother started asking you for money, how was your relationship? We hadn't seen each other in a long time. How long? I don't know. Late 80s. That would have been just before he got sent down for arson, yeah? You didn't visit him? He was your kid brother. Some kind of rift, was there? No, we just weren't close. So did you give Andrew any money? Some, yeah. Why? Because he's my brother. So on the one hand, you're not close, you don't want anything to do with him. But on the other hand, you're prepared to give him money, no questions asked. That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Why don't you tell me exactly why you met your brother last night? To tell him the pot was empty. How did he take that? He wasn't happy. Did he get aggressive? Not exactly. But you had a fight outside the bar? <laughs> no. You leave at the same time? No, I left before him, just before nine. You went straight home? No, I, I stopped for a kebab. Then how did you get home? Cab? No, I walked. And what about Andrew? Where did he go? Well, obviously, he went round to my house and stole the watch, didn't he? I don't know. I'm asking you. You think he was trying to get his watch back? That's why he's attacked me. We don't think anything yet. We're just trying to find out a bit more about you and Oliver's relationship. What's going on between you two? It's not very clear at the moment. How much is that watch worth? That's about nine grand. And that's how much this brother of yours owes you? When have you ever been in a position to lend someone nine grand, Andy? Eva, you've got to believe me. I've always been straight with you. I've just found out you've got a brother I've never heard of, and now you're trying to tell me you lent him nine grand. Is that what you call being straight? I need to go outside. I need some air. Andrew. You've got to start telling us the truth. I have told you the truth. Everything that I've told you is the truth. I know this is a personal question, but have you and Andy got financial problems? <laughs> well, we've never been flush. Have things got worse recently? We've been trying for a baby. Really? He's found it hard to accept that it might not happen. <laughs> you know... It's funny, really. You know you hear these women talking about their husbands being good men and you know they don't believe it, really. Well, I'm not one of those women. I know Andy's a good man. I'm hurt he's lied to me, but there'll be a reason. Timing-wise, is it feasible that Andrew could have got to his brother's and then back to the place where we found him? Well, he left the E1 bar at 9 o'clock. At 9.26, the burglary was reported, and the latest estimate for the time of the assault was 9.38, so, yeah, it's possible, but it doesn't make much sense. And Andrew lives all the way on the other side of Canley. If he did burgle Oliver's house, what was he doing on Madison Street when he lives in the opposite direction? No, I think it's much more likely that he was assaulted just after he left the E1 bar. Did Oliver give you details of his movements after he left E1? Yeah, he said he popped into a kebab house. Ben, check the CCTV, yeah? Kebab house. Uh, yeah, it confirms Oliver Robson was there yesterday evening. What time? Um, was... There at 10 past 9, left at 20 past. There's no way he could have assaulted Andrew. If 
Oliver Robinson didn't assault him, you must know something about it. Otherwise, why would he have lied so consistently? Exactly. Uh, just spoke to Eve Brennan. She mentioned something about trying for a baby, only it wasn't happening. So I got FIU to check into Andy's bank account, and he paid a company called RDC Medical £1,300 recently. Well done. Well, they're based in the Harley Street area and they specialise in male fertility. Andrew's farming blanks. Oh, nicely put. Very sensitive. No, it's just obvious that that's what it is, isn't it? Private fertility treatment could cost a fortune. Explain why I needed the cash. Do you want us to go back to Andy and confirm it? Yeah, thank you. Well, right, so he's been assaulted. He's fought with his wife and now we're going to ask him questions about his wedding table. Well, is this all too awkward for you? Because if it is, I'll do it. No, it's not awkward. It's just obviously a big deal to him. Otherwise, he would have mentioned it before. Yeah, of course it's a big deal. He's trying to start a family, be a father. That's what we're here for. Well, it might be what you're here for, mate, but I've spent the last 20 years doing everything I can to avoid it. You get a call for that, you know? While you two discuss it, shall I just go and ask Andy? No, it's got to be a bloke. Loved it. Yeah, good. Get your pecker up. What's going on? Andrew Brennan's disappeared. What do you mean he's disappeared? He's going to bear his own clothes upon him. Oh, OK. Right, OK, who's the last person to see him? Me. Smithy, his gown's still here, but his own clothes are missing. Right, OK, so he's obviously trying to go somewhere. Yeah. I'll get onto security, see if he's still in the building. Good. Take a nurse with you, cos uh, looking at the blood, he's going to be in a bad way. Anything? Security have done a search of the building and he's not here. Well, maybe he went home. He wanted to see his wife, didn't he? What's happened? Andy's left the hospital. Yeah, I know, and the doctor said he shouldn't be moving around. It could be dangerous. Right. Mrs Brennan, have you got any idea where Andy might have gone? No, I just went out to clear my head. You were the last person to see him. Right. Could he have gone home? No, I've got his keys. What about his brother? I mean, Andrew's still under the impression that he attacked him last night, right? Yeah. So that's reason enough for him to go and have it out with him. Plus, he still thinks he's in the frame for the watch. Yeah, I should have it to the brewery. <sighs> What is going on with him? We don't know, Mrs. Brennan. We do think that he's been paying for treatment at a private clinic. What? Yeah, has Andy had fertility problems? We've just finished a second round of IVF, but we both knew that was it. Going private was never an option. Well, we think that's what he's been using the money from Oliver for. We've been looking into adopting. Try not to worry. We'll, we'll keep you informed, OK? Well, these are the evening ones, we can bleed them in the evening, but these are the ones that were what, about four o'clock? There he is. We need to get all Mr. that Robinson. stuff out. Mr. Robinson! Mr. Robinson! Mr. Robinson, all that stuff Mr. Robinson excuse it. me. We believe your brother's left hospital to come find you. Has he been in contact? Andy? No. Why would he? Well, he's under the impression that you attacked him last night. I wouldn't lay a finger on him. No, we know that, sir, but he doesn't. Yeah, he left hospital before we could tell him. Please, someone get over here! Oh, I need help here. now! Someone get over here! Chair Oscar from 54, ambulance to quite a candy brewery site, Thank over. You. All right, I wanted to stay nice and still for me. We're going to get you back to the hospital. Right, I've got something. OK, this is Montague Lane, around the time of the assault. Look, gold Volvo. Montague Lane's really close to Madison Street, where we found Andrew. That's got to be our minicab. Run the index through the system, sir. Charlie Dokes. Sergeant Stone, PC Gale, Sunhill. We'll get straight to the point. Were you in the Madison Street area around about 9.20 last night? Possibly. You work as a minicab driver, don't you? It's all right, we know you haven't got a licence. But we'll assume for now that you're in the process of getting one. I am, yeah. We're investigating a serious assault that happened in Madison Street around that time. It's got nothing to do with me. We're not suggesting that you're involved, but we have got a witness who saw you pick up a man in a suit near the vicinity at that time. Do you remember that? Oh, uh, Yeah, he was a youngish, uh, white guy, 